Hello dear viewers, welcome to the new initiative of Trishti IAS, the PT Special Series, where we are going to revise current affairs of special significance from the perspective of prelims exam. Today, in the episode 1, we are going to begin with the current affairs of environment and ecology. Let's start with land degradation and increasing desertification. ISRO's report on desertification and land degradation, Atlas of India, have pointed out that in 2018 and 19, degraded land figure above 97 million hectares, that is 29.7% of India's total geographical area exists. Land degradation refers to decreased productivity of land, desertification is also increasing rapidly in the country. Some 83.69 million hectares underwent desertification in 2018 and 19. Land degradation within a dry land regions is termed as desertification. Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Karnataka are the most affected. Removal of soil cover due to rain and surface runoff is one of the biggest reasons for desertification. Now let's talk about Plastic Waste Management Amendment Rules. Plastic Waste Management Amendment Rules 2021 Amend the 2016 Rules Single-use plastics are commonly used plastic products that are used only once. Currently, the use of plastics with a thickness of less than 50 microns is banned. From September 30, use of polythene with thickness less than 75 microns will be banned. From December 2022, ban on polythene with thickness less than 120 microns will be banned. From July 1, 2022, ban on manufacture, import, storage and sale of single-use plastics will also be there. Polystyrene and expanded polystyrene commodities are also included in the purview of the ban. Plastic or PVC banners with thickness less than 100 microns will also be banned. The Central Pollution Control Board along with state pollution bodies will monitor the ban, identify violations and impose penalties already prescribed under the Environmental Protection Act of 1986. Let's talk about India Plastic Pact. Two major organizations, Confederation of Indian Industries and World Wide Fund for Nature, will come together to reduce plastic pollution. The pact will be launched in September this year. The pact is the first of its kind in Asia. It can be expected to boost demand for recycled content, investments in recycling infrastructure, jobs in the waste sector and beyond. The pact will support the extended producer responsibility framework and improve solid waste management as envisioned in the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. This initiative will also prove to be effective in solid waste management. If we talk about EPR, it is the responsibility to dispose of the waste in an environment-friendly manner. Patent for KVICs Plastic Composite Paper Plastic Mixed Handmade Paper developed by KVIC has got a patent. It was developed under Project Replan that is reducing plastic from nature. Certificate was handed over to Kumarappa National Handmade Paper Institute from Jaipur. Plastic mixed handmade paper is a big step towards reducing plastic waste. High density waste polythene and low density waste polythene have been used in the manufacture of paper. Cost reduction of up to 34% is there. This product is recyclable and eco-friendly. KVIC is now making carry bags, envelopes, etc. with this paper. This product is a better initiative 
towards proper use of polythene waste. Project Replan was launched by KVIC. Under Project Replan, plastic waste is destructured, degraded and diluted. If we talk about KVIC, that is Khadi and Village Industries Commission, it is a statutory body. The objective is to promote Khadi and other industries in rural areas. Four more wetlands are included in Ramsar sites. Ramsar site status has been given to four more wetlands, Thol Lake Sanctuary and Vadhavan Wetland of Gujarat, Sultanpur National Park and Bindhavas Wildlife Sanctuary of Haryana. The number of Ramsar sites in India has now reached 46. Maximum number of Ramsar sites, that are 8, are in Uttar Pradesh. Bindavas Wildlife Sanctuary, which is the largest wetland in Haryana, is a human-made freshwater wetland. Sultanpur National Park from Haryana supports more than 220 species of resident, winter migratory and local migratory water birds at a critical stage of their life cycle. Thol Lake Wildlife Sanctuary in Gujarat lies on the Central Asian Flyway and more than 320 bird species can be found here. Vadwana Wetland from Gujarat is internationally important for its bird life as it provides wintering ground to migratory water birds, including over 80 species that migrate on the Central Asian Flyway. These wetlands are home to endangered bird species like Egyptian vulture, Seiko falcon, sociable lapwing and the near-threatened Dalmatian pelican. Wetlands are very important for the ecosystem in an area. They provide services like food, water, fiber, groundwater recharge, water purification and controlling erosion. Now let's talk about the cabinet ratifying the Kigali Amendment. Cabinet approved ratification for the Kigali Accord. In 2016, this agreement was signed in Kigali, that is the capital of Rwanda. In Kigali Agreement 2019, changes to the Montreal Protocol on the ozone layer came into force. India also approved the ratification for this agreement. The Montreal Protocol lays the foundation of the Kigali Agreement. The ozone layer present in the stratosphere protects against harmful ultraviolet rays. An increase in industrial chemicals is responsible for ozone depletion. Countries agreed on the Montreal Protocol in 1987. India became a member of the Montreal Protocol in 1992. The ozone depleting substances regulation and control rules are implemented in the country. India has met all the targets of the Montreal Protocol. Montreal Protocol emphasis on phased control of ODS and the main ODS are CFCs, halon, methyl bromide, carbon tetrachloride and methyl chloroform. HFCs were initially considered a non-ozone depleting alternative. Targets for phased reduction of HFCs emissions were set through the Kigali Amendment in 2016. Target to reduce HFCs by 80 to 85 percent by the end of the 2040s. If we talk about India, India will work in four phases regarding the Kigali Agreement. 10% to be phased out by 2032, 20% by 2037, 30% by 2042, and 80% by 2047. Refrigerators, ACs, special foams, and aerosol propellants are the main sources of HFCs. Now let's talk about India's leopard population and the increment in it. The Environment Ministry has released a report on the status of leopards. An increase in the number of leopards 
and tigers has been seen. Leopard numbers have increased by 63% between 2014 and 2018. Scientific name of leopards is Panthera pardus. It is listed in Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and it is listed as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List. Leopards are found from tropical rainforests to grasslands. They have no presence in mangroves of Sundarbans and Thar Desert. The height of leopards is usually 45 to 80 cm. The length is 100 to 190 cm. Gestation period of female leopards is 90 to 105 days. The speed of a leopard is 58 to 16 kmph. Now let's talk about Earth Overshoot Day. On 29th July, Earth Overshoot Day was observed and it was led by Global Footprint Network. There is no particular date to observe this day, rather there is a special calculation for its determination. Earth Overshoot Day is computed by the following formula. Earth's biocapacity to be divided by humanity's ecological footprint and multiplied into 365. That is the Earth Overshoot Day. Such a situation when the demand for natural goods and services of humans exceed the supply. The day on which this consumption exceeds the limit is called the Earth Overshoot Day. Less carbon emissions and forestation have longer Earth Overshoot Days while higher carbon emissions and deforestation have shorter durations. Thank you so much.